What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space and we're back in Space Engineers and um, first up I've got to apologise if my voice is a bit funny today, I'm a bit stiffly, I'm not feeling too great but I still have something for you today and something that it's one of those videos where I started off building one thing and then by the end I was building something completely different. So today started working on something for the version 2 next gen carrier and the way I'm going to approach that is kind of building ships independently with specific features on them and then take those features and kind of combine them all into the end product. So what I was doing today was working on something with the sort of self-repairing armor concept, which I got kind of working, and then I went to test the thing, and I was like, I'm bored of beating up on the Easy Start 2 base and the large red ship, so I'm going to go and build something to go and fire weaponry at, you know, a target. So that's what I've got for you today, is essentially what I've built as a target, although admittedly it is also a fully functional survival base and you guys have been sort of asking in the last few videos for me to do something with oxygen as well so this is obviously got that too and let me give you a little tour around and then we'll shoot some stuff at it so we have a number of main hangar doors on this there are one 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 here and then yeah I'll do a quick tour of the outside first so we've got main hangar door there and then two matching ones either end guarded by these little sort of pillboxy viewing portal bits that stick out and then at the back side here we have another much much smaller one which is aimed at drones and what I'll do is I'll run around and we'll go in through one of the big hangar doors into the main ship so these are all sensor activated and I'm pretty certain that I won't have set the ownership on these sensors so let's just go and do that now this is so that when I share the world you guys can do it yourself but you'll just need to go in and transfer everything to you otherwise it won't respond to you being there uh, I've set permissions as such that these things will only open to friendly players so as you can see that thing all depressurized as it opened up and this is into our main hangar bay and we've got proper gravity here as well, so let's get down on the ground. And one of the things I wanted to do with this, I wanted, I wanted to make a ship, uh, a ship, a station that looked really cool. But I also wanted to make one that was kind of semi-realistic. You know, I didn't want to make it too geared towards anything specific. Not massively defensive, just a functional combat base for somewhere out where you might come across some fighting from time to time, but you're not expecting to be charged by a Death Lotus, for example. So this is the main hangar bay, and I've used these conveyors throughout the design just to kind of try and make things look a bit cooler. The conveyors, I find, are one of the coolest looking things in vanilla Space Engineers, so I've got those dotted around all over the place. Uh, and this is the, the main hangar, so with the three doors and some docking functionality. And then we've got this little extra hangar on the side here, which I've opened up. This is where our drones will be stored. And these can be depressurized and launched separately from anything in the main hangar. And they're just stored sort of hanging from the ceiling like bats almost. With, we've got a couple of mini welders in here for now, but room for a few more. Alongside sort of materials and things there so that you could use this as a fabrication area as well. So this is the, the hangar area and we'll go up into the main body of the station now. We've got basic hangar controls here for all the doors independently as well. So from here I could shut that door again if need be and we can go up this is just a little gangway leads around more of these conveyors to try and make the thing look a bit cool and looks out over the sort of main entrance to the base and this would be the one that you'd probably invite the people you were less sure about through because that's the one that's wrestling with turrets on the outside but let's follow it through and in here is the main staircase i'm going to be lazy and not shut any of the doors behind me even though this is a pressurized area i should be and each area is individually pressurized obviously but yeah, I'll be lazy for this this little walk around. And this, this main staircase leads to pretty much all the different sections on the ship. So uh, first door, let's do this one first. And through here is one of those long uh, defensive pillars, whatever you want to call them. And each of these, they look out over the entrance to one of the two hangars. So we come up to the end here, show you what it's like in the end. We've got a little control station so that you could perhaps control one of the turrets on it and have a look around at nearby ships. And then this is also pressurized as well this looks like it's off that's a byproduct of the coloration that i've used for it the saturation of this black means the leds disappear so if i go in here you can see that this is in fact a fully pressurized area it just doesn't look like it and if we look out the side here you can see that's where the hangar door is so you've got good coverage over that 
They come back into the base proper and the next door along here, the one we were going to go through, leads into sort of the main area of everything. So we've got a little extra solo room up here. This is on its own special little floor, partly because it leads to the other one of the two turret sort of, I don't know what you want to call them, the turret pylons. Um, and this one is on a slightly higher level to the other one. But it also leads into the main oxygen storage and cargo storage area. And I've kept this a bit sparse again. I wanted it to be the sort of base I would actually make myself just for fun, rather than the, something geared specifically towards defense, like the Frontier base I did recently, for example. So it's a bit more spread out, and thus we've got a bit more potential for the damage to be enjoyable to look at, is the idea. Again, this is, this is all geared towards being a target in the long run, but I've tried to build it to be a, a relatively tough target, even if it's not an impenetrable one. And in here we have the main control room. So we've got a couple of these medical bays for recharging your air, and this is also a pressurized area, of course. And then we've got the big grav shield. And um, I quite like sticking them in glass and sticking the green lights in. It's completely unnecessary, but so be it. And then off this room, there's three more doors that lead to three different areas. So again, in here, you can see the sort of conveyors being used to try and make things look cool. I know how inefficient that is, but why not? And then we've got refineries and assemblers in this room. Try to lay them out in a way that makes them look a bit different to normal refineries and assemblers. And then that actually leads outside onto a landing pad. But we're going to have a look at that in a bit. Oh, and the main grab is in here as well. And if we come around, this leads us through the crew quarters. Let's have a quick peek through here. Again, crew quarters is not something I normally do, but I, I wanted this base to be a bit fun. Actually spend some time designing a little bit as well as making something I could shoot at. So this is our crew quarters, and these are all identical pretty much, but we just go in here. They've all got a bed, their own independent air supply, and a light. Ooh, la. plush. It's luck lap of luxury. And a nice space for you. I can't complain about that. But the interesting thing about this was these rooms showed me how lenient the game is as far as what's air sealed is concerned, because this is completely made out of those metal grids. As you can see, I can't even get near that wall there building, because it's actually the metal plates on those side. And again, the saturation of the colour I've used helps, because if we go in here and look at this side, you can't see the lines in them, because they're so dark. But apparently you can use those to solve air leaks if you want to slap something over the top of it that can be walked over. So that, in fact, there was an air leak into the floor below. That's a light with one of those metal grids over the top. And then from the crew quarters, you've got these both lead outside to a gantry that connects round to where that little landing pad was I mentioned through there. And then finally through here, we have the main power room. So this is reactors. Again, all hooked up, and then this leads outside, so if you follow it through, this leads outside and up a, sh up a sort of jetpack shaft, and there is another way at the top. This is also at the top of that big staircase, but we can go up here to the top of this and into the final internal area, which is a kind of secondary landing area, a place to store your stuff, and kind of just a place to connect the two landing pads together. So that's the top of that big staircase that uh, we started off on from down the bottom. You can see way down there, and then... This leads outside, so we'll pop back outside now. All of the external doors are proper airlock doors, of course, so these are all doubles. And this takes us outside to sort of one of the bigger landing pads. This is maybe where you dock a large ship that was visiting, for example. And if we come around outside now, you can see what I mean about the metal grids making up most of the structure of this sort of uh, crew quarters area, because... That's pretty much all it is, is metal grids and windows, cheating a little bit, but it seems to be fine, perfectly well air sealed, so can't complain. That's the little landing pad out the back of the drone area, and then finally, down the bottom, I have not forgotten that the bottom of the base is important, so while there's not much detail down here, we've got a whole bunch of turrets, and our antennas kind of defended a little bit inside those little armor blocks and of course remember everything here is heavy armor even though it doesn't look like it i've intentionally used colors that hide the fact that it's heavy armor this is completely heavy armor so that's kind of my i don't know what to call this even i don't know what to call it i didn't know what to color it um, i'm sure you'll see from the time lapse at some point in this i spent quite a while just changing its color for no reason but it there, there it is it's a, it's an base and now, the more important part is, let's go and shoot some stuff at it and see how it does as an target. 
So we have things set up here with that base set up as an enemy way over there, good Death Lotus sort of range, and we're going to use the original Death Lotus. And some people are ask why on earth are you not using the green one, the spinny death thing? And to be honest, that's because that thing's relentless. Once you've started it, it will eventually destroy whatever it's pointing at. Unless you come and stop it, you'll manually come and find it and get rid of it. It's going to kill it. So this is A, a little bit more fair, but B, maybe the penetration nature of these, they're a bit more like an actual projectile, will help out a little bit. So what I'm going to do is these are already set on target, so I'm going to jump in and set them on their way. And then as we follow them down, I'm going to talk a little bit about another idea I had while I was building on this along those sort of target lines. So let's just set this one off as well. I'm not going to ride in it because trust me, those things make you very, very dizzy if you stay in them. So yeah, I make a lot of weapons, and I quite enjoy making weapons. Hopefully it's something that you guys quite enjoy watching of mine as well, because I certainly find that one of the more fun parts of Space Engineers, the sort of arms race. But one thing I don't have a huge amount of, again I'm sure some people have noticed, is things to shoot the weapons at. Uh, because I don't build lots of big ships myself, I tend to launch stuff at the Easy Start 2 base, which, as I mentioned at the start, I, I'm kind of fed up of beating up on that, and it's a bit easy, to be honest. Now another thing I like doing is spotlighting some of your guys' work. I recently did some stuff for Nick Mick and for Seoxonic, who are two long-term subscribers, viewers, and guys that I've sort of played events with and so on, really got to know a bit. And that's how I'd like to do the spotlight stuff. It's not about trying to find something interesting on the workshop and just showing it off. I'd like it to be trying to find something interesting that you guys have made and getting a chance to show that off, but I don't always have the time and the opportunity. So what I'm suggesting is you guys go onto the Steam group, throw up your creations as targets for me to launch weapons at, and I can give you a bit of a shout out and say, hey, we're using this ship from whoever today as our target, have a quick look at the design, mention it a bit, and at the same time it gives me a nice sort of varied selection of things to shoot at. So, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. If you do like it, stick it up on the workshop so we can have a proper look. And, yeah, maybe I'll be doing that in future. I think it's kind of an interesting idea, a chance to have a look at your ships as well. And that took just the right length of time for the first Lotus to have arrived, and the second Lotus, by the looks of things, to have just taken a hit to the Lotus itself, which is unfortunate. But a decent amount of it has still arrived at the base. Let's go and have a quick look at the damage up here. I have to say, that stood up pretty well. You've got to remember, that's a pair of Death Lotuses there. Oh yes, the turrets don't much like me either. Let's switch to the spectator camera and go and have a, a bit of a look using this instead so that I can look at what I like and not be pushed around. So yeah, it looks like it did a pretty good job of stopping quite a lot of that incoming fire. As you can see, everything is still shooting back. We've depressurized a couple of areas, but they aren't important ones. So we've got this sort of main staircase and the entrance area at the top is depressurized. And we've also depressurized the main hangar. But I mean, they're both areas you would expect to be depressurized at times. So fairly happy with how that stood up. I think it'll do the job as a target quite nicely. Looks like we did lose Oh no we didn't, that just sits, sat in the way looking like we had. So yeah, that's my creation for today. Not at all what I was intending. Hopefully it's still vaguely interesting to you. Hopefully the time lapse was good. If nothing else, this was a nice big juicy creation for the time lapse side of things. Let me know what you think down below. What would you do with this? How do you feel it went as my first shot at oxygen? And yeah, what would you guys do a bit differently? And of course, as I mentioned, if you've got ships you want me to blow up and at the same time say, a bit of a hey, a bit of a shout out at the same time. Get on the Steam group, hit them up. I'll put a thread up there. I'd be really interested to see what you guys have made over the years. It'd be a good way to have a look at what you guys have been making in Space Engineers in a kind of more friendly video focused way. So cheers guys, thanks a lot for watching. If you did like this video, please hit like, please hit subscribe. It really helps me in the channel. And otherwise, I'll catch you next time.